So I'm going to read a verse to start my sermon, and this is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And these are beautiful verses. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. I love that passage. As many of you know, um, I have a battle with OCD. You guys know what OCD means? It's, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. I like everything to be neat and tidy and clean. I want everything to be spotless. I like everything to be organized. And in order, I like to feel safe. And that's my personal battle. battle. I, and I still have a light case of it, but I still struggle with it. And this battle happens at nighttime as well. My battle at night is when I constantly think about the things I didn't get done. I think about the things I have to do tomorrow. I think about the things that I could have done better. I think about the things that people said and about the things people didn't say, about the things people did, about the things people didn't do. And all this is just running through my brain all night long. Sometimes I get a really sleepless lot night from that. Sometimes I never sleep. Imagine that, tossing and turning all night, worrying and anxious and having all these thoughts running through my brain. And then the next day, boy, do I suffer. You may have noticed sometimes you see me with bags under my eyes. Well, it's getting better because I'm working on it. And I am getting better. But I do still have that battle. You know, and I'm trying to, to obtain mental peace so that I can have mental peace during the day and during the nighttime hours, so that I can enjoy my life and I can enjoy my sleep. That's really what I want. You know, like I teach, I teach many of my uh, counseling clients to use what's called self-talk. I tell myself every day, as I start my day, and I start working at seven in the morning, and then I stop at 9 at night, so I work from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And during my working time, I tell myself, you can do it. You can do it. You can finish your job today. You can accomplish lots of things. You can have a day without anxiety. You can. And then at night, I tell myself, you can lay down and sleep. You can fall asleep. You can stay asleep all night long. You can enjoy this rest in peace. You can, you can, you can. You can sleep through the entire night and enjoy your rest. That's the kind of self-talk I give to myself. You know, there are many scriptures that say that, that I should be able to just get rid of my anxiety, just throw it away, and not be anxious about anything. In Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is, gives the service on the Sermon on the Mount, and he proclaims, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat. Don't worry about your, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food. The body is more than clothing. Think about the lilies of the field. They grow and they do not toil. And I tell you, 
just as Solomon said in his fancy arraignment. All of his fancy arraignment could not equal the beauty of the, lily, of the lilies of the field and the way they are closed. And then later Jesus said, come all of you, all of you who are weary, who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and I will help you find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Then Paul says, Paul says, do not be, be anxious about anything. We just read these verses. But in every situation, with prayer and petition and thanksgiving, Give your request, make your request be known to God. And the peace of God which transcends, transcends all understanding will keep and guard your heart and soul in Christ Jesus. So what do you think they're trying to tell us? Paul said that most people do worry and they do have anxiety, but they don't have to stay in that state. Paul said, even though people have inner turmoil or inner anxiety, if you pray, you can receive inner peace. Paul said that a lot of people are overwhelmed in life, but if you turn your eyes to God, you can see things which are important and then discern which are not important. Paul is telling us the same thing that Jesus is trying to tell us. And that is that worry can destroy your life, but you can do it. You can have faith. You can have no anxiety. You can, you can, you can. You can work hard. You can be successful without anxiety. Now, do you think that's the point that Paul was trying to make to us? You know, if you check uh, the scientists, there are many biological reasons that can lead to anxiety. It's not only our mental imaginations, there are biological reasons too. It has to do with brain chemistry. Sometimes we don't have enough serotonin. Sometimes our synapses are firing too quickly or too strongly and that can lead to anxiety. Sometimes our thyroid isn't functioning correctly and that can lead to anxiety. So a lot of people do have anxiety because of a biological or chemical um, factor. Now, if it happens every day, if you're anxious every day, it could be a medical problem, and it can also lead to worse medical problems for people. It can really um, impair your, your normal functioning of your daily life. So what do we tell people like that? What do we tell people who are on medication for anxiety? who are worried about the chemical imbalance. If you just tell them, you can do it, come on, yeah, just, you don't have to feel anxious, you don't have to be nervous. Paul said and Jesus said that that kind of idea is just silly and just get rid of it. Now, should we tell folks like that, something like that, that you don't have to worry ever? Well, in our society, we do have a negative connotation for mental health issues. We have negative connotations for people who have anxiety attacks. You know, I know a great and amazing counselor who suffers from anxiety and anxiety attacks. But people have named it, they have negative words for those folks. It's a very, very negative view people have. But stress is real. People think we aren't supposed to suffer from stress. People think we're, that life is supposed to be easy, we're supposed to just go along, and that if we are in a high stress level, that can lead to anxiety. Stress can cause anxiety. And I have to admit that the stress, to relieve stress is not an easy matter. We are bombarded with stress at work, with finances, with our marriage problems, raising children, raising grandchildren, with our doctor's appointments, with our errands, 
with the whole myriad laundry list of things we have to do, that those all can cause us to feel stress. And as we talk about each thing on our list, you just have to acknowledge that stress is real and stress can cause anxiety. And what about folks who live in a different way than we do? Think about the refugees. The refugees who are trying to find a new home, a new place where no one will kill them. They, their stress and their anxiety is at an extremely high level. Think about homeless people. They don't have a place to live, they don't know where to go, they're trying to figure out where to go, where to get food, what to do with winter coming. That is extremely stressful and causes anxiety. What do you about single mothers who are trying to raise their children with limited funds? Maybe the father does not provide child support. That is a high stress situation that leads to anxiety. What about unwanted pregnancies? The young women who don't know how to tell their parents, they don't know how to take care of infants, maybe they're 15 or 16 years old. Those are high stress situations that lead to anxiety. Stress is real. I want to emphasize that stress is real. It's not all in your head and it's not insignificant. But I think what Paul was telling, trying to tell us to the people in Philippi is anxiety. You can put a halt to anxiety, but think about it. If you've got a cold, can you stop your nose from running or stop from sneezing? So I have really delved into this to try and figure out what Paul is trying to tell us and what Jesus is trying to tell us. Because we are under stress. We do feel anxious every day. How can we just get that out of our lives and erase it from our minds and our hearts and stop it? You know, I just could not make sense of this. So, you know, this verse says, we can have peace that surpass, peace that surpasses all understanding. So maybe there's something there that God's trying to tell us. Maybe God's trying to give us a special kind of peace that I want to understand. Now, I don't want to demand anything from you that you should never have stress again, that you should get rid of all your anxiety, that you need to be a good Christian and then your stress will be alleviated and your anxiety will be gone and you will have none. Well, I would never say something like that. And I would never put those kind of demands on you because stress is real. And I know anxiety is real. And we all live with it every day. Even me, every day. That obsessive compulsive disorder, even though it's light, I face that every day. So I think Jesus and Paul were trying to give us a new perspective on our lives. One that makes sense and a perspective that doesn't ask you to feel guilt. To feel like, well, if you're a real Christian, you should have no anxiety or worries. You have to remember that Jesus Christ, Jesus was a very was very anxious before his crucifixion. Remember that? The scripture says that Jesus sweat blood. And that's rare, that's called hematophidosis. I brought good job. <laughs> And that's a rare situation. It means that your sweat glands are close to your blood vessels. And because of stress, your blood vessels can expand and contract, and they can burst. And you actually can sweat blood. That is how stressed and anxiety and anxious Jesus was. He prayed for that cup to be taken from him, but he also prayed, not my will, but yours be done. You have to remember that. So maybe Jesus and Paul are trying to tell us that in our world that's fraught with danger and violence and stress and struggle and conflict and discord, that anxiety will stay in our mind constantly, but maybe we need a new perspective. We can have a new perspective that Jesus can give us rest. 
in Philippians. It's such a good book in the Bible. Sometimes I'm going to ask you to go home. You know, sometimes I ask you to read chapters. And I don't know if you actually do it or not, but I really, truly want you please go home today and read chapter 4 of Philippians. Just read the whole chapter 4 and that's all. And once you finish that, you will feel so much better about yourself. You'll feel better about your faith. And interestingly enough about this book, Philippians, during that time that Paul was writing, Paul was suffering in prison. He was experiencing torture, beatings. His ship had grounded. His eyesight was declining. He was terribly lonely. And that's stress, right? Would you all agree that that is a stressful situation? Yeah. And that stress can cause anxiety for real, right? Well, while he was writing this, Paul wrote more about rejoicing and peace in this letter to Philippians while he was undergoing that situation. It's truly inspiring and amazing. Through torture, through declining eyesight, through a shipwreck experience, through beach beatings, through prison. And the prisons back then were not like the prisons today. Prisons were horrible. But during that time, Paul wrote more about rejoicing and peace than in any other. And he confesses, he did confess that he had anxiety and frustration during his ministry. He confessed that he had terrible anxiety. He felt like he had terrible stress. But he still maintained. You know what he said? He said, I have learned how to be content with my life. I have tasted what it feels like to have all the things of comfort. I have tasted what it feels like to have nothing and to be abjectly poor. And both in times of plenty, in times of need, I have learned how to be content with my lot. I know how to be content because I have learned that God is always with me. Always. But Paul didn't tell the poor folks that they were insignificant, that beatings were no big deal. He did not say that. No. Instead, Paul recognized, Paul recognized that many people needed help that people were being treated unfairly, that a lot of people were lost, people were struggling. And God, we know that God expects us to provide assistance because we know those type of situations are not okay, and not okay, and we cannot ignore what's going on in the world. We can never ignore what's going on, ever. If you're a Christian, you're called to serve, and that's the way it is. If you're a Christian, you're called to fight for each other. If you're a Christian, you're called to help people in trouble. But you need to know that God's love is not just for rich and famous and popular folks. It's not only for those folks. It's not only for people who can hear. God says, no matter who is there, no matter what your situation in life, God loves you. And God is with you. And no one can take away your God. You can't. No one. Can you imagine that? God is by your side for eternity, forever and ever. And I know people who struggle with finances terribly. They are just dirt poor. But they are happy in Christ. They struggle to survive. They've got anxiety. They worry about the electricity getting cut off. They worry about how they're going to purchase food, how they're going to pay their rent. They've got so many things on their minds to worry about. But they feel content because they know God is with them. Now, don't think, oh, God's with me. That's no big deal. No, that is powerful. The presence of God with you during easy times and tough times 
during times of plenty and times of need, during times of joy and times of sorrow. God is with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. God is always there and you need to always keep that in mind. Because even though stress and anxiety are real, and maybe our anxiety will never be totally taken away, stress will never be fully resolved, but we need to realize that in our lives, the things that cause stress, regardless what they are, that all is not important. That stuff that causes us stress will never change our relationships with God. Never, ever. No matter how much you have, no matter how little you have, even death, you know, death is going to happen to all of us, but God has promised us eternity with Jesus Christ. And that means God is with us now and will be until the end of our physical, bodily passing and continuing to be with us in heaven for eternal life, no matter how hard your life feels. You know, you don't have to earn this. You don't have to be a member of an elite group. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have a perfect life. This is all yours through Jesus Christ. Eternity is all yours. Isn't that exciting? That's so exciting to know that we've got that and to realize God is with us no matter what happens. That God has promised us eternal life. We need to know those two things and those two things can give us peace and rest within Jesus. And we don't always feel peace. Maybe we feel some stress covering, overlying our peace. But that peace is given. And we never have to worry if God loves us. We have the knowledge that yes, God does love us. We never have to worry if we're good enough for Him. We know we are good enough for Him. We never have to worry about our purpose in life. God will give you your purpose in life. Once we accept that peace and know that God is with us now on earth and in the future in heaven, that can help us to realize that everything in our life is not worth the worry. It's just not worth the worry. It's not worth it. We could lose everything we have. Our kids could grow up and go down the wrong path. Maybe our kids are going to be trying to go to a popular school and they don't make it in. Maybe we never rec have been ne never recognized for our diligent work and our service. And nobody takes the time to recognize it. Maybe the Indians are going to lose, maybe the Chiefs are going to lose every football game there is. Maybe your house leaks for 12 years. That's mine. Maybe your, the foundation of your house is shifting and you're trying to work to rectify that. Maybe you've got so many things that are causing you stress, but Paul and Jesus both are trying to tell you everything will be okay. So rest, sleep. I think our relationship with God will never, be, will never take away our stress, but it can give us a different viewpoint on our lives that we know no matter what happens, everything will be okay. Everything. And that peace is the peace that surpasses understanding. So when you've got a problem struggling with, with stress, or when you're having a terrible time, try to think about Paul, please. You know, think about Paul. And don't let anxiety take control of you. You know, Paul was persecuted, he was beaten, he was imprisoned, he was beheaded for his faith. He was beheaded. But he followed Jesus Christ. Even though it's, during that time it was not easy to be, to be a Christian, that was under the reign of Emperor Nero, and it was not easy. 
It was not an easy time like we enjoy today, but Paul still rejoiced because he knew that Christ was with him and that no one could take away his God. Know this, peace doesn't come from inside or from anxiety. The world gives us trouble and challenges, but peace is found in God, God alone, not from outside of us, not from inside of us, but from the knowledge that Jesus Christ is always with us and watches over us day and night, every day of our lives. We will have stress, but God will always be with you. And I hope you can feel that his peace, you can feel his peace and his love with you every day. And I want to have an altar call this morning because I want each and every one of you, you know your struggles, your anxiety, your marriage problems, maybe your financial problems, your relationship with your children, relationships with your siblings, parents, or whatever you are worried about right now. I want you to come with a repentant heart and belief in Jesus Christ and the power of Christ and feel him with you today and tomorrow and every tomorrow through eternity. And just come and let me pray with you and offer you that peace. But yeah, I have got OCD and yeah, I'm under stress, stress and pressure, but I really enjoy finding that peace that God is trying to teach me about. And I want to share that with you. How to I want to pray with you. So I'd like to have maybe some light music and people can just come as they feel led, and I will be here to pray with you, okay?